Hey everyone, I'm Alex. Thanks for clicking and welcome to this lesson on 10 English tongue twisters. So tongue twisters are a great way to help you practice your pronunciation and to improve your speaking confidence. They are used by actors, singers, politicians, anyone involved in public speaking. But it doesn't only have to be for someone who is at a podium giving a public speech. Although if you have to give a presentation at work or do a job interview, they can be very useful to warm you up before you do that. Um, but they are just a good and fun way to help you practice your English. And again, we're going to look at 10 of them. And before I start, if you enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel on YouTube, uh, like the video, share it with your friends, laugh together as you try to say all of these weird and fun tongue twisters. So the first one, we're going to get started right away. This is a little simple, I hope. It is Specific Pacific. I'm going to say that slowly one more time, and you can repeat it after me. Specific Pacific. So this is helping you with your sp and ps sound. So you're not mixing up your sp with your ps sounds. So the goal of this tongue twister, uh, you should be trying to say it like three times fast. And the majority of the ones in this video are this way. So I'm going to try it. I'm going to do my best. And first, I'm going to start slow and then I'll see if I can get fast. Specific Pacific, specific Pacific, specific Pacific, specific Pacific, specific Pacific, specific Pacific. <laughs> Sorry, I spat a little bit at the end. See, that one is tough. Um, but I think I did a pretty good job. So let's try it one more time. It's your turn. Three times fast. Specific Pacific, specific Pacific, specific Pacific. Close? <laughs> Not bad, right? Okay, let's move on to the next one. Fresh fried fish. One more time. Fresh fried fish. So here you're practicing your F and your fr sounds and th sounds. So one more time, three times fast. I'm going to speed it up. Fresh fried fish, fresh fried fish, fresh fried fish, fresh fried fish, fresh fried fish. Not bad, not bad. Actually, I'm proud of myself there. So um, let's see if you can do it. So repeat after me. I'm going to say it fast. Fresh fried fish. Fresh fried fish. Fresh fried fish, fresh fried fish, fresh fried fish. <laughs> okay. That third one is always the, the difficult one. Um, so again, hey, I'm an English teacher, but I also have a tongue and a mouth just like anybody else, and I can struggle with these as well and have fun with them. Okay, so let's look at the next one. Next, we have friendly fleas and fireflies. Friendly fleas and fireflies. So repeat after me. Friendly fleas and fireflies. Okay, and this one really helps people with like their R and L sound. So you have friendly fleas, fire flies. So you have the L, R going back and forth. So we're going to try this one more time. Repeat after me. Friendly fleas and fireflies. Okay, now I'm going to embarrass myself by trying to say this one three times fast. Friendly fleas and fireflies, friendly fleas and fireflies, friendly fleas and fireflies. Ah, not bad. Okay, that was good. I feel I feel confident. I practiced a little bit uh, in my car, actually, before making this video. So I feel good. I feel good. All right, let's continue with the next one. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. So this one is a classic from elementary school for, for many English speakers. So try, repeat after me. We'll do slow at first. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. 
this one is not too bad. A lot of children use this one. So let's try it three times fast now. Rubber baby buggy bumpers, rubber baby buggy bumpers, rubber baby buggy bumpers. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, you ready? Okay, three, two, one, your turn, go. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Not bad? How do you feel? Okay, good. You got your B and your R's going there. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, use that one with your kids. Let's continue to the next one. A proper copper coffee pot. A proper copper coffee pot. This one is actually quite challenging, even for me, if I don't slow down. So one more time, repeat after me. A proper copper coffee pot. Good. And you'll notice, again, I live in Canada, so I'm using the Canadian slash American pronunciation. Uh, if you are doing this one in British English, it would be closer to, well, I might, do I want to embarrass myself? A proper copper coffee pot, like similar to that. So I'm just going to speak the way I speak, which is uh, a proper copper coffee pot. Let's try it three times fast. I'm not confident, but let's, let's give it a try. A proper copper coffee pot, a proper copper coffee pot, a proper copper coffee pot. Yes, <laughs> not bad. Okay. All right, your turn. Three times fast. A proper copper coffee pot. Three, two, one, go. I was just doing it in my head and I know I got tongue tied while I was trying to do it like quietly. <laughs> All right, let's continue with the next one. She seized a sneeze. She seized a sneeze. Repeat after me, your turn. She seized a sneeze. Good, so I guess she captured the sneeze before it you know, before she sneezed. So she sees the sneeze. So here you have sh and s, uh, similar to she sells seashells by the seashore, which is another all time classic and which you can listen to in my other tongue twisters video. Um, yes, so she sees the sneeze. I think I can do this one. I feel good about this one. So three times fast. Here we go. She sees the sneeze. She sees the sneeze. She sees the sneeze. Hmm. I think I was overconfident. <laughs> uh, she sees the sneeze. She sees the sneeze. She sees a sneeze. Uh, if you can't do it super fast, like I clearly cannot with uh, consistent accuracy, it's okay. Slow it down. Repeat after me one more time. She sees the sneeze. Okay, not bad. We both feel embarrassed now. So let's go to the next one. Cooks cook cupcakes quickly. Cooks cook cupcakes quickly. Repeat. Cooks cook cupcakes quickly. Okay, so you have your k and qu. So you have cooks cook cupcakes quickly. Uh, it's not too bad, but I think once you try doing it quickly, like the cooks cooking the cupcakes quickly, uh, it can become a little challenging. So let's give it a go. Let's try this one out. <sighs> la 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 la. Yes, I'm ready. Cooks cook cupcakes quickly. Cooks cook cupcakes quickly. Cooks cook cupcakes quickly. That's what it was, right? Cooks cook cupcakes quickly. Let me check my notes. Cooks cook cupcakes quickly. Yeah, that's the one. All right, now it's your turn. Just if you laugh, it's okay. Uh, so one more time, I'm going to say it fast and I want you to repeat after me. Cooks cook cupcakes quickly. Three, two, one, go. Not bad. Once you get into the rhythm, right? Like cooks cook cupcakes quickly. Cooks cook cupcakes quickly. It's kind of like a hip hop song. Boom, 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 boom. You get it. All right, next one. Eat it if it's easy. 
Eat it if it's easy. Repeat after me. Eat it if it's easy. So this one is quite useful if you have trouble with the E and I sounds in English. So eat it if it's easy. So you have the E at the beginning and in the final two vowel sounds. So eat and EZ. You have one on one side, one on the other, but in the middle you have I, I, I. Actually, three is. So one more time. Eat it if it's easy. Okay. So I'm going to try this one three times fast. Eat it if it's easy. Eat it if it's easy. Eat it if it's easy. It sounds like a weird word, like all together in one. Uh, that one has a lot of linking. So eat it. So let's try that. Eat it. If it's. If it's easy, if it's easy, sounds like a cool word, actually. Okay, uh, so your turn. Just say it two times fast this time. So, eat it if it's easy. Three, two, one, go. Okay, not bad. Again, if you struggle with the e i sound, it takes time. It's like me with the French R. Restaurant, restaurant. It's kind of like that. Um, so yeah, if you have the e i struggles, it gets better with time. Just keep practicing. And a sentence like this is a great way to do it. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, let's see if I remember this one. Ned not was shot, but Sam shot was not. Ned not was shot, but Sam shot was not. And I remember. Okay, good. So repeat after me. First, we'll do it in two parts. Ned not was shot, but Sam shot was not. Okay, I'm going to try it three times fast. Ned not was shot, but Sam shot was not. Ned not was shot, but Sam shot was not. Ned not was shot, but Sam shot was not. If I do the hard T's, it, it sounds a little better, but it sounds more posh, I think. So let me try that one more time. I'm going to put my hand up like this as if I'm sipping tea. Ned not was shot, but Sam shot was not. Ned not was shot, but Ned not was sh shot. I, I messed up. Maybe you can do a better job than I can at that one. So uh, try it one more time. Ned not was shot, but Sam shot was not. And let me know if it's easier with like the hard T at the end, or if you do like the uh, unreleased T in English, like Ned not was shot. Uh, when I do it that way, I find it more difficult than Ned not was shot. That sounds a little easier to me. And I want to do this when I say it because I, I feel like drinking tea. Okay, we have one more left, so let's do it. I had a tough, thorough thought though. I had a tough, thorough thought, though. Mm-hmm. It's true. So let's practice this one. Repeat after me. I'll slow it down because we have a lot of th and a lot of spelling stuff that's happening, but the pronunciation is inconsistent. I had a tough, thorough thought, though. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not bad. So I'm going to try this one three times fast. I had a tough, thorough thought, though. I had a tough, thorough thought, though. I had a tough, thorough thought, though. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, uh, let's slow it down one more time because I know with uh, thought, though, tough, the pronunciation is different, even though the spelling is kind of similar in a lot of the words. So it's, I had a tough. I know it's T-O-U-G-H, but it sounds like T-U-F-F, -F, tough, like difficult. So one more time, I had a tough, thorough thought, though, thorough. So thorough means complete or whole. Um, so one more time, 
we're, we'll just do this one one time. You guys have been wonderful, fantastic. I do not want to torture you right at the very end. Let's take a deep breath. This is as much for me as it is for you. Okay. I had a tough, thorough shot. No, thought, not shot. That was Ned's shot with the Sam not uh, something like that. Okay, one more time. I had a tough, thorough thought, though. Perfect. Okay, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, tongue twisters. These are a fantastic way, like I said, to practice your pronunciation, uh, to have fun when you're speaking, to develop your enunciation skills, uh, which can help you not only in public speaking situations where you are the only person speaking in front of a group of people, uh, or if you're an actor, but in your everyday conversations. I already feel like I'm speaking a lot clearer after doing these practices. So if you feel that way too, wonderful, fantastic. I'm happy to hear it. And um, you do not have to do a quiz for this video because it's purely a pronunciation video, which makes my job easier too, because I don't have to write the quiz. Yay. But uh, go back to the beginning of this video, watch this again, repeat the tongue twisters, and check out the links in the resources uh, that are attached. Check out the resources in the description of the video. See, now I'm all mixed up after all that talking and tongue twisting. Uh, I hope you feel okay, though. This has been going on way too long. I had a tough, thorough thought, though. Um, yeah, thank you so much for being with me. Good luck with all of your studies. I wish you nothing but success, and um, I'm done. Bye.